This past week, a man in Indiana who is running for a seat on the city council, city board, whatever it is for the Clinton township in Indiana managed to win his Republican primary in spite of the fact that he is sitting in jail right now after being accused of murdering his wife right after she finished her last chemotherapy treatment. So this individual is alleged to have murdered his cancer stricken wife. He is currently in jail awaiting trial. A trial date has not been set and he still managed to win a Republican primary. Granted it's a small town and granted he only had 60 votes. There were still 60 people in this Clinton township that looked at this man and said, okay, Hey, listen, I know he may have killed his cancer stricken wife, but I like where he stands on the issues. So let me check that box next to an alleged murderer. And the man is alleged to have uh, bludgeoned his wife with a gallon sized concrete, uh, planter, like a, a flower pot, basically hit her over the head with that, then dumped her body in a Creek again, allegedly because he has not been convicted. And of course, according to the legal experts in the area, they say, listen, th there's nothing that bars this guy from running for office or even winning office. He is innocent until proven guilty. And that is the way things are in this country. Absolutely. hundred percent. Yes. Now they did make sure to let people know that of course, if he is convicted of this felony, uh, he is barred from holding office. So his seat would become vacant if he were to win the general election. And of course, very unlikely, I, I would hope that this man wins his general election, but given the fact that he won the primary in spite of being in jail, not even able to campaign for himself kind of tells me that there might be a chance he could win, uh, this election. So that's, you know, terrifying, but here's the thing. What this tells me is that apparently there are some people that are so partisan in this country that it doesn't matter what your candidate is accused of doing. And sure, maybe we shouldn't jump to conclusions in any of these issues. The guy is, as I said, accused. He is innocent until proven guilty. Maybe he didn't do it. The evidence though, uh, you know, that I, that I'm reading about here, I've, I've kind of made up my mind. Uh, but again, I'm not in the jury. I'm not in the legal system at all there. So, you know, it's not up to me and I'm not even going to say my opinion on what I think may or may not have happened. I read you the facts that we do know about. So draw your own conclusions. Maybe look at the story yourself and see if you want to, you know, make any prejudgments, which we shouldn't do anyway. But again, Republicans are apparently willing to overlook anything. As long as you got that little R next to your name, it doesn't matter, right? You're one of us. You're on our team because we believe the same things. Who cares if you may or may not have murdered your wife who again had just finished her last chemotherapy treatment. Like she, she was beating cancer almost over with it. Dead 41 years old, allegedly because she found out that her husband was cheating on her. They again, allegedly had a big argument and that's when he picked up the pot because she became irate according to the reports and uh, allegedly killed her at that point. And I'm tired of saying the word allegedly at this point. So I'm not going to continue on with the story because that's pretty much all there is to it. A guy sitting in jail awaiting his murder trial, won a Republican primary. And that kind of tells you all you need to know about the state of the Republican party in America today. Hey everyone, this is Aspen. And did you know that for the low, low cost of $0 per day, you can subscribe to the fair and balanced YouTube channel. We also encourage you to like comment and share, but again, click that subscribe button and help Aspen. Oh, not be so grumpy.